Can I retire at 55? Where will my retirement income come from? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Your Financial EKG live stream. We are talking about can I retire at 55? If I do retire at 55, where will my retirement income come from? Where is my retirement income going to come from if I retire at 55? If I retire at 58? If I retire at 60, where is my retirement income going to come from? So we have to think about where our assets are allocated, where our accounts, how they are tax qualified, and those factors will determine where our retirement income is going to come from. Think about this. If you're saying, hey, I want to retire at 55 or I want to retire at 53, or I want to retire at 58, you really got to think, okay, if I retire at 55, I've probably got 40 years of retirement income that needs to be distributed from my retirement investing accounts. And if you retire before Social Security, if you retire before pensions kick in or Social Security kicks in, now you're asking yourself, okay, I'm living off only my retirement investing accounts, as I go into retirement, I've got to make sure that those investing accounts can sustain my retirement income for that short amount of time before Social Security kicks in, before any kind of pensions kick in, before whatever other form of income that you have that might be guaranteed comes in. So where will my retirement income come from if I retire at 55. Well, the first area where you might have retirement assets where you would get income is from a 401k or a 403b. So if you decide to retire at 55, the vast majority of Americans have most of their retirement savings in 401ks. Now, we've talked about the median account balance for 401ks for individuals in their 40s to their 60s. We're not going to go through that too much in detail today unless we get to it. But the vast majority of the people that I work with here at Your Financial EKG and Pearl Wealth Group, the vast majority have their retirement savings in 401ks. So if you're going to retire at 55 or if you're going to retire at 56, 57 or 58, you can use the rule of 55 for your 401k. Now, what is the rule of 55? The rule of 55 simply says, if you leave your current job, you retire, you get terminated, you get canned, like maybe you work at Twitter and you're 55 and Elon Musk is wiping you out. If you leave your current job in the year you turn 55 or later, you can use your current 401k for retirement income without paying the 10% penalty. Remember, if you have an IRA, a 401k, any kind of qualified retirement accounts, and you don't follow the IRS rules specifically for retirement income, you will pay a 10% penalty by pulling that money out. So you'll pay taxes on that money, and then you're going to pay a penalty on it. So if you have a 401k and you're saying, hey, I want to retire at 55, or I want to retire at 57, you want to make sure that you can use the rule of 55. Now, let me show you what the IRS says about the rule of 55, because I don't want to have any kind of confusion when it comes to our, let's share the screen here, when it comes to what is the rule of 55. So here's the simple rule of 55. Distribution. So this is from the IRS's website called Additional Tax on Early Distributions from Retirement Accounts. Distributions made to you after you separated from service with your employer, if the separation occurred in, okay, in or after the year you reached age 55, distribution made from qualified government benefit plan is defined in section 414, section D. If you're a qualified public service employee, that's for age 50. So if you are 55 years old and you are, if you leave your job in the year you turn 55 and you have a 401k, you can take money out of that without paying a 10% penalty. If you work for a qualified public safety employee, a federal or local government, it's age 50. So you have the rule of 55 
for everyone who is on, in, not in the public sector, who's in the private sector, if you work in the public sector as a federal employee or a state or local employee, you have age 50. OK, so I want to retire at 55. Where's my retirement income going to come from? Well, if it's in a 401k, a 403b, the rule of 55 for privately employed people and the rule of 50 for federal, state and local employees is your first best bet for taking out retirement income. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to use the rule of 55, you want to make sure that there's enough money in your 401k to sustain you between age 55 and 59 and a half. You know, if you've got old 401ks or old IRAs and you're considering retiring at 55, it might be a good idea to roll over the money from your old 401ks or a rollover IRAs into your current 401k if it is allowed especially if you're like 53, 54 years old and you're saying, hey, I kind of think I might want to retire at 55, 56, 57. Get as much money into your current 401k as you possibly can. It's a great time to think about maximizing those contributions. If you're contributing to your 401k and maybe to like a Roth IRA outside of your 401k, if you're getting close to 55, maybe if you're not maxing out the 401k, instead of putting that money in the Roth IRA, stick that into the 401k. Really try to build up the 401k as much as possible because the rule of 55 will help you. It'll give you the bridge to 59 and a half. John Gill says this. He says, I never knew about age 50 for government employees. Yeah, the government employees it's federal, state, and local employees. It's kind of the rule of 50. Don't talk a lot about it, but the IRS does give you a, let me just show it again to you guys so we can, so I can not be share screen. Let's go to the window. Here we go. Share it. Boom. So distributions made to you after you separate from service from employer, if the separation occurred in or after the year you reached age 55. So that's for private people. So if you're working like if you work for me or if you work for, you know, Kroger's or you work for Amazon or whatever, if you are age 55, you can use the rule of 55. If you work for a federal, state or local government and you're separated for service in the year or after the year you reach age 50, you can use the rule of 50 and not pay the 10 percent penalty on taking retirement income out of your 401k. Now, this is a great publication. If you get a chance, this is IRS topic number 558, additional tax on early distributions from retirement plans other than IRAs. This is a great place if you're thinking about retiring early or you need money out of your 401k and you're trying to figure out how to do it, here's a way to find out, is there an exception to the 10% additional tax? Again, topic number 558, go to irs.gov, type that in and you can find this. Email me, I'll email you the PDF. I got it on my computer. And this will show you distributions that you can make from your 401k or your government plan without paying a 10% penalty if you're under the age of 59 and a half. We're not going to go through all that today because that's not what the live stream is about. But where will my retirement income from come from if I retire at 55 or any time under age 59 and a half? 401k. The second place you got to be thinking about if you're under the age of 59 and a half, and you're thinking about retiring early and most of your assets are in IRA. So let's just say we've moved on from 401ks. If most of your assets are in IRAs and you want to retire before the age of 59 and a half, you're in kind of a conundrum because you've got to ask yourself, how am I going to get retirement income pre-social security? I have no 401k, so I can't use the rule of 55. All my money's in, a, in an IRA or a rollover IRA. How am I going to get retirement income? Well, the second way to get income under the age of 59 and a half without paying a 10% penalty is using a 72T or substantially equal periodic payments. Now, I'm a big IRS fan. So let's go look at the IRS is what I don't want to say like I'm an IRS fan, like I want you to pay more taxes. Let's not say that. But I'm all about paying less taxes in retirement. But when we talk about things, especially when we talk about it on YouTube, I want to make sure we are correct. So we're going to look at the IRS's website because they're the only game that matters in town. They're the only ones that matter. If you listen to any other financial advisors, they just tell you what they want to say off the cuff. Verify it, right? 
measure, what is it? Measure twice, cut once. Well, if you're going to take money out of your IRAs or 401ks, measure a hundred times. Talk to your CPA, your tax accountant, your financial advisor, pull up the IRS's website because you want to make sure you're doing what's right. So if the majority of your assets are in IRAs, you can use a 72T. Now here's the IRS's website, or this is the PDF. If you want it, you can email me and I'll send this to you, or you can just go to the IRS's website, type in 72T, it'll pull up. Substantially equal periodic payments. So if you have an IRA, you're allowed to do a 72T with all of your IRA or a portion of your IRA. So you can split up your IRA into multiple different IRAs and do a 72T on one. Or you can use your entire IRA to do a 72T. Basically, what a 72T says is you're going to take substantially equal periodic payments from your IRA over a time period. And based on your age is how long you have to do it. So the IRS says you have to take substantially equal periodic payments for five years or age 59 and a half, whichever is longer. OK, so if you're age 52, you've got to do five years or 59 and a half, whichever is longer. So at age 52, you got to do seven and a half years of substantially equal periodic payments. If you are 58 and you need to use a 72 T for retirement income, you're going to do it for five years. So 59, 56, I'm sorry, 59, 56, 59, 60. 61, 62, 63. That's five years or age 59 and a half, whichever is longer. Okay. Now, how do you get or how do you, how is this determined? So with a 72T, now this PDF, and I, like I said, go to the IRS's website, type in 72T or email me. I can send you this. They will actually show you the three methods for determining how much you can pull out of your IRA for a 72T. The three methods are the required minimum distribution method, the amortization method, and the annuitization method. And all three methods require the use of a life expectancy or mortality table. Um, and the second and third methods require you to specify an acceptable interest rate. Now, those interest rates have increased recently. Now, the required minimum distribution method is the least popular method when calculating 72Ts. The amortization and the annuitization method are the most popular. You can easily calculate. If you're trying to calculate how much money can I get out of my IRA for a 72T, just go, just Google it. 72T calculator. Charles Schwab has a good one out there. Vanguard has a good one out there. Contact your CPA or your tax account to make sure you're doing it correctly. It's very, very important that you understand exactly what you're doing when you are doing a 72T. Here's the difference between the 72T and the Rule of 55 when it comes to penalties. The rule of 55 allows you to keep money into your, your current 401k or which will become your old 401k when you leave your job. And you can pull money out of that either substantially like, you know, every month or once a year, whatever your 401k allows you to do. But the rule of 55, there's no penalty when you pull money out and you can pull out a thousand dollars or you can pull out five thousand dollars. It doesn't matter. They're not there's not like they don't you're not you, it's not like a schedule you have to follow. With a 72T, it is a very, very, very specific schedule that you have to follow or you will pay a 10% penalty in the year that you mess up and for the previous years. So again, this PDF is really good if you're thinking about doing a 72T. Can I retire at 55? How am I going to get retirement income between ages 55 and 59 and a half? If the majority of your money is in an IRA, I encourage you, go to the IRS's website. This is the IRS, it's a PDF you can download directly to your computer, substantially equal periodic payments. And it's going to show you exactly what you need to do when it comes to a 72T. A lot of people ask me, can I change one method to the, the another? Yeah, you can. Yes, Revenue Rule 2002-62 permits a one-time change from either the amortization method or the annuitization method to the required minimum distribution method. So, you might be having the same questions. Can I make a change? What's an example of that? Here are the examples. So this is a great PDF, especially if you are wondering, how do I do a 72T? What do I need to do? Because I tell you what, I called my CPA and my CPA has been doing, he's an older gentleman. He's been doing it for like 40 plus years. And I said, hey, 
I need to do some 72T calculations for clients. Can you help me? And he was like, what's a 72T? So even him being a CPA, doing it for a long, long time, very smart, got a lot of wisdom, helps me out a lot during tax time. He didn't even understand 72 T's exactly. So you want to make sure you go to the IRS directly. You get something like this so you know exactly what you're doing so that you do not mess up. OK, now this is a great PDF. So can I retire at 55? How am I going to get retirement income? The first way we're going to do that is we're going to do it. If you have a 401k, we're going to use the rule of 55 if you're a private employee. And we're going to use the rule of 50 if you are a local, state or federal government employee. The second way we're going to get retirement income, if we're wanting to retire at 55 and we're under the age of 59 and a half, is a 72T. We just went through all the 72T and how that works. Fast Eddie, hit the like. Yes, if you're watching this live stream, hit the like button for me. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. That's how we get your financial EKG and Pearl Wealth Group out there more. Todd Hallam, hey, Drew, what's up? Todd, how are you guys? Hope everybody's doing great. Thanks for watching. So the third way that you can get money, if you're wanting to retire at 55 or 56 or 57 and you know that you don't want to touch your 401ks or IRAs. The second way you can, or the third way you can get money is through a cash bucket. And I talk a lot about this on the channel and it's starting to make some rounds because I'm noticing when people set up calls with me and I talk to them for the first time, they say, Hey Drew, I've been really working on my cash bucket because I know you talk a lot about that. So let's go through what a cash bucket is and why it's important for you. So a cash bucket of money is a bucket that you can essentially take money out of without paying any kind of penalties. So you can put money in, you can take money out, um, you can invest it any way you want. If you want to put in $50,000 a year, you can put in $50,000 a year. If you want to put in a dollar a year, you can put a dollar in a year. You will pay capital gains taxes. You'll pay taxes on interest and taxes on dividends. So basically what a cash bucket is, is a taxable brokerage account that you have that works coinciding with all of your 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEPs, and SIMPLES. So I'll show you how I, so for me, how I do it is really, really simple. So I have a SEP IRA because I am self-employed. That's where I put my retirement contributions. So I have a SEP IRA and that is where most of my contribution is going. So it goes into my SEP IRA. Now my SEP IRA doesn't allow me to take money out of this until I am 59 and a half without paying a penalty or I do a 72T, okay? So the SEP limits me on when I can take money out. It also limits me on when I can put money or it limits the amount of money that can go into the account and I have to pay taxes when that money comes out. Now I can do backdoor Roth conversions and all kinds of stuff on that. So we have a SEP IRA the other account that I have is a taxable brokerage account. Now, my taxable brokerage account allows me to put money in as much as I want or as little as I want into an account that I invest pretty much just like my SEP IRA. Lots of VOO, which is the Vanguard 500, a lot of NASDAQ, just growing it, trying to grow it as much as possible. I'm 36 years old, so I want to grow my money as much as possible. But here's the thing. If I decide to retire at 55 years old and for the next 20 years, I guess it would be less than 20 years because I'm 36, 37, 47, 57. So the next 18 years, I build up this taxable brokerage account. I can actually pull money out of this account without touching my SEP account. And there's no penalties. I'll, I'll pay taxes on capital gains, but that's not a penalty. That's not ordinary income. And it gives me the flexibility that if I don't want to take money out, I don't have to. Or it. It, I can. So it gives this flexibility. So here's the thing when I tell people, I just had a call with a, with a young person. She's actually in Massachusetts. She's 26 years old. And she said, Drew, I'm maxing out my 401k. And I said, that's great. And she goes, I, I don't know what else to do with, I've got more money. I want to invest. I've got extra capital. She's single. She's got a higher, a higher earning job. And I said, well, what about a taxable brokerage account? Just in your name, just put some money into account and invest it. Because if you're wanting to retire early, the taxable brokerage account, which I call a freedom fund, the freedom to do whatever you want, will allow you to 
um, grow your, I mean, you can pull the money out whenever you want. You can take the income. You can not take the income. You can retire whenever you want. It gives you the freedom to do whatever you want. Let me see if we got a question here. Fast Eddie says, if I start a new job at 55 and a half and quit at 57 and a half, can I use the rule of 55? If I moved money from a previous 401k to my current 401k, can I still use the rule of 55 on that? So Fast Eddie, I think we're getting a little bit. So the, the short answer to that is yes. The long answer to that is I know you're a little younger. And so I would say that you want to talk to your 401k administrator when you do take the job at 55 and a half. But yes, that the rule of 55 would still apply to that. You just want to make sure the current 401k allows that. John Gill asked this. Curious why you use VOO instead of BTI. Great question. Um, BTI is total market. VOO is SP 500. I don't know. I, I like that VOO or BTI. Uh, I don't have a... Uh, technical answer for you, John. I mean, I actually personally, in, in accounts that we manage for clients under our registered investment advisory firm, we use both BTI and VOO, um, total market and the S&P 500. I prefer uh, the S&P 500 just because I like the, I just like it. That's just, that's my personal thing. I'm, my favorite color is blue. Okay. So, you know, it's just kind of the thing, but that's a great question. I think that's a, a wonderful, I don't think you can go wrong investing in either VTI or VOO. All right. So can I retire at 55 factors to consider? Where will my retirement income come from? We talked about 401ks. We've talked about 72 T's. We've talked about a cash bucket. Another thing to think about if you're wanting to retire early, if you're not necessarily sick and tired of working, if you do decide to retire early, part time work is a great option. And I know I've talked to some people on here. Herb is somebody who watches a lot um, and he talks about getting part time work, part time work is something that will help you bridge the gap from whenever you retire pre-59 and a half to 59 and a half or longer. It also, there's, there's studies that show that continuing to work and continuing to use our mind actually helps our cognitive ability as we continue to age. So it's not necessarily all, always just a financial um, a benefit to work part-time or continue to work maybe at a lesser stressful job. I've got clients now that, that work really high stress jobs and they're saying, hey, Drew, I just want to get out of the high stress job and I can work at a part time job or do something that I enjoy. Uh, I, ha I had a conversation with a couple up in Minnesota recently and their dad retired and he went to work for Flea Farm, you know, and, and just work part time because he enjoyed that kind of stuff. And so that's an option. And that helps bridge the gap. It helps bring down how much money you have to take out of your retirement portfolio. Think about this. $55,000 is the median retirement income need in America. So if you retire at 55, $55,000 is the median retirement income need. Now, it could be higher where you live. It could be lower, right? So I'm in Tampa, Florida. It's different than if you live in Albany, New York, or if you're in San Antonio, Texas, or Topeka, Kansas. So $55,000 is the median retirement income need. Let's say you've got a million five. So one million five hundred saved for retirement. Well, if you're taking $55,000 off of that per year for retirement income, that's 3.6% that's coming off of your portfolio. Now, that $55,000 is going to have inflation on it. So if you've watched this channel, now we're going to do this towards the end. We're going to look at some Monte Carlos and some retirement and some of the retirement software, and we're going to show this. But the $55,000 coming off the million and a half, that's 3.6% coming off your portfolio every year, and that's going to increase with inflation. Let's say you get a part-time job making $15,000 a year, just something really simple. Well, now all you need is $40,000 off of your retirement portfolio, right? So you're taking $40,000 of retirement income because 15,000 is coming from your part-time job. Now the money that's coming off, the percentage coming off of your retirement assets is 2.6%. 2.6% is a lot better than 3.6%. I know it's only 1%, but you got to think about inflation as well. So part-time work, Again, if you're up for it, if you're willing to do it, listen, Tom Brady came to Tampa. He's still part-time working, right? I mean, that's what I would say at whatever our record is right now. Not very good. Um, but part-time work as you age will help you. Now, Brady probably has got to work because he just he, he needs money now. But part-time work will help bridge the gap from age 59 and a half, 50, 55 to age 59 and a half, Okay. So we've talked about 401ks, rule of 55. Again, if you just joined us, make sure you go back. 
We talk about 72 T's. That's how you get money out of an I. If you have an IRA, a so 72 T is a way that you can bridge the gap. We've talked about part-time work and we've talked about a cash bucket. So can I retire at 55? Where will my retirement income come from? I want to go back to the cash bucket because I totally missed something. And I wanted to show you guys this. This is another reason why you want to do the cash bucket. And I'm a little bit like all over the place today. My entire family, we had COVID like last week. And I still feel like I'm in that brain fog a little bit. So I'm like, you know, I'll have something up here I want to show you. And then I'll be talking about something else and it'll just kind of fly away. And then it comes back. It's like a Ferris wheel. It just circles around. So pray for pray for your boy because I'm just coming off of COVID and uh, I'm, f I'm feeling good now. But whew, people that said COVID's like the flu, man, that, that's not any flu I've ever had before. So cash bucket. When we're talking about a cash bucket, um, I did a video recently. Um, or I guess what was the date on this video? I don't know. It doesn't say. I did a video within the last six months. Let's just say that. <laughs> I guess that's recent. And what I talked about was I had a client of mine who wanted to retire early, but the majority of his assets were in 401k. His name is Chris. Majority of his assets were in 401k form. And so he had a home where he had $300,000 equity in his house. So he wanted to retire early. He's in a high stress job and he, he does want to work part time, but he doesn't know if he when he wants to go back to work. Right. So he just needs some time to bridge the gap. Um, at the time of this recording, at the time of this video, he was uh, he was uh, going to get married. And so there were some other factors going into this as well. But he, he just didn't know when he wanted to go back to work. He needed some time off. He worked in technology with the Ukraine crisis and cyber warfare and, and China. It just it was it's a tough job for him. And so he he told me, he said, Drew, I have this three hundred thousand dollars in my house. What if I sold my house and I used that to live off of? And I said, well, I mean, that's a personal thing. I'm not going to tell you to do that. I mean, that's a lot of work to sell your house and pack up and move to an apartment. But for him, he wanted to make that sacrifice because he was tired of working. And so what he did was he essentially created a cash bucket by selling his house, getting $300,000 in equity and being able to use that equity. Let's see if I can show you on here. Get my arm out of the way. Get your arm out of the way, Drew. So he had $1.8 million in his 401k. He created a cash bucket of $300,000. And then he used that income to live off of. Now, we've only been doing this for about 12 months now. But essentially, it would last for eight years, from 51 to about 58, 59 years old. Or I'm sorry, 54, you know, somewhere around 57, 58 years old. So essentially, he could take this $300,000 that he created as a cash bucket and use it for about six or seven years while his 401k sits over here and continues to grow. So we had 1.8 million. We've got about eight years of growth on it, earning 6% rate of return over those you know, eight years. We'd have $2.9 million. So it's a great way to create this cash bucket if you want to and continue to grow your assets. That's how he did it. Now, I'm not telling everybody to do that. I would love for you to have $300,000 in a taxable brokerage account that you start creating at a young age or you start, listen, if you sell some rental property or if you've got, you know, I was talking to a guy in Kentucky recently and he's got a rental property and a farm and he's thinking about, you know, he doesn't necessarily need those anymore. He's going to sell them. And I said, well, let's put that into a taxable brokerage account. Let's put that into a cash bucket so that you can use that for the future. So it's just a way for you to really get um, some flexibility what I really want to try to tell people is I want you to have flexibility in your retirement. And if everything's 401k, 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 IRA, 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 you lose your flexibility of when you want to retire. Think about COVID. People go, well, everybody, a lot of people retired early because they were just sick of everything. Well, if you didn't have the flexibility to do that, then you were putting yourself into some, some really big tax problems and into some harm. So just you really want to be aware of that. So can I retire at 55? Where will my retirement income come from? The cash bucket is a huge um, a benefit if you're going to do that. John Gill says, I recommend that video to everybody. It was definitely interesting. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. So, hey, guys, thanks for watching today. Make sure you hit subscribe and the like button. So let's go through. What, how, how long have I been going here? Where's my timer at? I don't even see it. Okay. Still getting used to my live stream software, as you can tell. Not as good. Oh, I've been going 29 minutes. All right. I got about 15 minutes more on this. I want to go through how I do some planning for clients. And what I want to do is I want to pull up 
my retirement software here for you. And I want to show you how we actually do some can I retires at 55. Or can I retire at whatever age? I, I think it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's just what we're trying to do is get a plan for the age that you want to retire. Most of the time I talk to people and I say, hey, when do you want to retire, John? And they'll say, Drew, I want to retire tomorrow. And I'll say, okay, well, let's let's look at a plan. Let's get you retired as soon as we possibly can. I'll say, well, you know, and I, I can't necessarily do it tomorrow, but I want to do it soon. So the, the goal is, when do you want to retire and how do we get there? Let me pull up. I'm trying to make sure I don't. Here we go. Here's the plan. So this is. Here we go. All right. So this is can I retire at 55 with one million dollars? I want to show you what we go through when we're building EKGs for individuals. Because this is really important, especially when you're thinking about where am I going to get my income from? Where am, how long is my retirement income going to last? And taking into account all the different factors like taxes, like the market, like um, inflation. I know the inflation number today's, or today's November 10th. The inflation number came out lower today, which is why the market took off. Um, so that's really nice. Yeah, we're at 990 points. I'll take that any day. Um, so let's look at this. So this is Drew Blackson. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Um, he's a pretty good looking guy, uh, does a lot of good stuff. Uh, but Drew Blackson, can I retire 55 with a million dollars? So he's retired 55 in six months. OK, so we're looking at this. We're saying, OK, his Social Security is going to start at 67. So the plan for this individual is to start his Social Security at 67. His gross monthly benefit is twenty eight hundred dollars. Now, obviously, what we can do in the planning phase is we can take this down to any age that we want. So you guys know that with Social Security, and let me shop, stop the share here. Let me show you another screen. With Social Security, you can start claiming benefits as early as 62. If you take Social Security at 62, you're only going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. Okay, so here's the website from Social Security. So this is Social Security. Okay, if you were born between 1960, your full retirement age is 67. So if you take Social Security at 62, you're going to get 70% of your full retirement benefit. If you take it any time past 62, between ages 62 and 67, you will get an increased benefit from 62, but a decreased benefit from, 70 and, from 67, which is when you get your full retirement benefit. So let's say you retire at 63. You get 75% of your full retirement benefit. Or you retire at 64, you get 80% of your full retirement benefit. If you retire at 65, you get 86.7% of your full retirement benefit. If you retire at 66, 93.3% of your full retirement benefit. And if you retire at 67, you get 100% of your full retirement benefit. So what we can look at when we're doing this planning is we can say, okay, if we take in, if we're going to take Social Security at 67, we've basically got 12 years of retirement income that we've got to use before we start chucking on Social Security. Now, I always like to leave pensions blank because I don't have a whole lot of clients that get pensions. What I see today more than anything is lump sum payouts. So if I have a client that has a pension, it's more or less a payout as a lump sum. Uh, I was just working with somebody. I recorded a video that'll that'll be up probably in a couple months um, where he he gets a million dollar lump sum pension. OK, he's not getting a annual or a monthly pension. It's just going to be a lump sum. He's 58. They're just giving a million dollars at 58. Didn't have a lot of other savings because most of his retirement savings was going into that pension plan. And so now he's got to figure out what to do with that, how long that's going to last when he can retire. So I want to leave pensions blank on this. So Drew's going to take Social Security at 67. It's going to be $2,800 a month. So we've got 12 years from age 55 to 67. So we go to assets. So in this case, we're using $1.9 million. Okay, so we've got an IRA of a million. We've got an individual account or a taxable brokerage account of $945,000. So here's what I want to do. I want to take out this nine forty five dollars because I was working on that with someone previously. So we've got a million dollars in our IRA. So we've got a million dollars. We're asking the question, can I retire at 55 with a million dollars? Now, I know there's bank accounts and all that stuff, but I just want to do a million dollars IRA. And obviously, we're going to do a 72T 
if he's 55 and we're using an IRA. We can change this to a 401k. And if we use a 401k, if it's a current 401k, we're going to use the rule of 55. Okay. So let's just, what doesn't matter, we're going to use 72T or rule of 55 at this point. Now, when we're doing, when you are doing projections for your retirement, it's really, really important for you to know or understand what is your rate of return. So in this case, we're using a 6% rate of return for the money that's in the market, as well as any cash flows and any forced RMDs. What that means is any extra money left over at the end of each month for this individual, if they don't use it, it's going to go back into the portfolio and it's going to earn 6%. Now, there's a lot of confusion when I talk about this on videos because people will leave comments and they'll say, well, he's taking out 6 and 7% of his portfolio. That's terrible advice. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the money that's in the market, this million dollars is still going to be in the market. It's still going to be invested. So it's going to earn something, right? It's going to earn something unless it's sitting in a cash account. So we want to project 6%. Now, the reason we're going to use 6% is because the stock market over the last 50 years, since 1950, has averaged 10%. It's 8% with inflation. So I'm going to back off 2%. I always do this. Now, we can easily... Adjust this down to anything you want. If you wanted to go to 5%, we could say, okay, we're only going to earn 5%. We're going to be real conservative. We can earn 4%. We're going to be super duper conservative because we want to make sure our money's there. Our, what they call a risk capacity, meaning how much risk you want to take. There's two types of risk. You have the risk that you need to take to earn your retirement income or to make sure your retirement assets last. We're going to talk about that when we see what this person needs to earn, that would be the retirement, that would be the risk they need to take. And you have retire, risk capacity, which is like how much risk you want to take. And those two figures a lot of times can be different. Like your risk capacity could be like, man, I don't want to take much risk on my money. I only want to make 4%. I'm good with that. But, you're, but the money needs to make 5 and 6% to make it last forever in your retirement. Or the opposite I see a lot of times is, I'll say, hey, how much rate of return do you want to earn in retirement? And they'll say, well, I want to make 9, 10, 11% per year. Dave Ramsey says 12%. And I'm like, ooh, y'all crazy. Listen, you got to bring that down a little bit because based on your assets and based on your expenses, you don't need to earn 9, 10, 11%. All you need to earn is 6% or 5%. So the question is like, why take the amount of risk? That Why take that extra risk if you don't need to, Right. Why, why have that? Just because you're trying to grow your assets to whatever? So what? Make sure they last forever. And don't let market fluctuations cause your retirement to go off track because you're like trying to be this high horse with your retirement growth. Get the risk. Take the risk that you need to take to make your retirement assets last forever. Okay, so I'm going to get off my high horse now or my soapbox um, for them. Let's, let's take this back to 6%. So 6% is our rate of return. So million dollars, 6%. Let's go to expenses. So I've got this at 5,833. Let's see, what is that on a monthly basis? That's $70,000. Um, let's change that to, what do you guys want it to be? First one to comment on expenses, I'll put that in. Um, I'm going to say 60,000 at this point. So we'll say 5,000, right? 5,000 times 12. Always use your calculator. Don't ever don't use your calculator, especially on YouTube. $60,000 in expenses. Now, what the software is going to do is it's going to give that inflation rate at 3.24%. So from an inflation standpoint, we're looking at the inflation on a 108-year average. So this is starting back from 1914 all the way to 2021. Obviously, 2022 will be in the books. We'll probably put another 6 and 7% on the board. The current 10-year average for inflation is 2.15. Now, keep in mind, you can see what inflation's looked like the last decade. Well, Fed, the Fed has kept rates low. It's been artificially low. So 2021, we're at 7%. 2022, we're probably going to be at 6 and 7%. So our, we're probably going to get closer back to that mean of inflation, that 108-year average at 3.24%. I would say we're going to be closer to that uh, over the long term, maybe even more or less kind of the 68, remember 1968, 70s, into 82. That's when Volcker really put the, you know, put the stamp down. Unless the Fed can, you know, do some kind of soft landing, we're probably going to be closer to that three and 4% range for inflation. So you really want to factor that in, especially when you're thinking about your retirement income.
Fast Eddie says $45,000. That's the expenses that you want to use. Okay, Fast Eddie, $45,000 is the expenses that we'll use, $37,50. I think this portfolio is going to be okay with that. Cash flows. These are something you also want to think about. And again, you might not use the same software that I use. This is kind of paid for software that financial advisors use. Um, if you are wanting to do specific things in retirement, like vacation, like maybe you want to buy a car, maybe you have a child's wedding, maybe you've got some sort of expense that you know is going to come up in retirement and you need to plan for that. You need to be thinking about that over and above your retirement expenses. A lot of times I had a gentleman talk to me the other day and I said, well, how much retirement income will you need in retirement? He said, I need $50,000. And I said, okay, that's, we can, that's doable. And he said, no, well, actually I probably need 60 because I need an extra $10,000 for some of the things that we want to do. And I'm like, well, when are you going to use that $10,000? He said, well, I don't know yet. I don't know when we're going to use it. I just want that. And I said, well, let's do this. Let's do the $50,000 base retirement income. That's what you're going to need. And we're going to put a 3.24% inflation rate on that. So that 50,000 is going to grow at 3.24% every year. And then let's take that $10,000 and let's put that in as a cash flow. And let's specifically designate what we're going to use for it. Because we don't want to be pulling out retirement income from our portfolios just willy nilly. Like, why are we going to pull out an extra $10,000 if we don't need to? So let's put that in as a cash flow. So let's say for this person, let's do, um, what does Drew want to do? I want to visit all the major league baseball ballparks. So let's say visit MLB ballparks. Um, let's make an annual expense. Let's say it's $10,000 because we're going to have some decent seats. Um, we're going to start that. Let's see. Uh, let's start it in what baseball season next year, May. Let's do May every year. 2023, there's 30 ballparks. Eh, let's just do it for 10 years. So we'll do this for 10 years. 55 to 65. Let's go to 70. So let's do 15 years. 2023, 33, 38, 2038. We're going to visit them ballparks. Um, and we can also do a change on this. We can give it an inflation rate. We won't do that at this point. It's going to come from a 401k. That's the only place I got. And it's going to go to pay for my MLB ballparks. All right. So now we can save and close this. And we say, okay, now we've got a $10,000 cash flow for 15 years that we know what we want to do with it. We know exactly what we want to do with this money. So we've got $45,000 in expenses that's going to grow by 3.24%. That's just living. And then we've got $10,000 going so that we can go visit all the major league ballparks. All right. Now I got to think about where I've been. I've been in New York, Tampa, Chicago, Cubs, not the Sox yet. Hmm. Cincinnati, Atlanta. That's it. So I got a lot. I got a lot of ballparks. I got. I got to get out to the West Coast. Those are some nice ones out there. Hey, where you're where you're from? If you've been to a ballpark, let me know. Put it in the comment section. All right. So let's go to retirement. So as we can see. We look right here, retirement funds analysis. This guy's out at 88 years old, which is pretty good, right? Like 88, 86 is kind of mortality tables now for females, 84 for males. So if you retire at 55 with a million dollars, you're out at 88 years old. You're probably like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. A few things that we need to adjust. Amount needed today to avoid shortfall, $223,000. So this person's 55, they got a million dollars. What the software is telling me is they need to inject 223 dollars thousand dollars into the portfolio today to make this money last forever or we need to earn seven percent a year so based on our current rates of return we need to inject two hundred twenty three thousand dollars earning six percent or that million dollars has got to earn seven percent in order for it to last forever and you can see this okay here's that ten thousand dollars that's going out for the mlb ballparks to visit the ballparks Here's our net monthly expenses. And as you can see how this software does it, which I really like, is that the software does the expenses on a monthly basis. So you're seeing an increase, that 3.24% increase for inflation. You're seeing that on a monthly basis. So it's growing that on a monthly instead of like a lot of times when I do it on the board, I can only do it on a yearly basis because I don't have a board big enough. But the software is nice because it does it on a monthly basis for us. And then it also gives us our tax down here. So $10,000 at 67, we're kicking on that social security of 2,800 bucks. And then we're out 
at 88 years old. So here's the question. When we look at this, we say, okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to the basics. All right. We want to retire at 55. So we're already retired. We've got a million dollars. Are there things that we can adjust to make this work? Because I had a guy in Colorado. He said, Drew, I want to find a solution to how I can make this work. I don't want, I don't want you to tell me it won't work. I want you to tell me how it can work. I grew up in Philly. John Gill, I grew up in Philly, but that stadium is long gone. Yeah, but the Citizens Bank ballpark, I watched the World Series. I watched the playoffs. That looks like a pretty nice place to watch some games fast. Eddie said Texas Rangers in Houston, two ballparks I definitely want to go to. I want to see Texas. I want to see the Rangers. Would love to see the Astros. I want to see that train in Houston when somebody hits a home run go by. Um, I think a dream would be to go see the Cowboys play football and the Rangers play baseball like in the same weekend. If that would, if that ever works, if anybody knows anybody in, in Arlington, let me know. If you know, Jerry Jones, hook me up. So we're looking at this and we're saying, Hey, what can we adjust? So for Drew, let's say we take social security a little early. So remember if we take social security at 62, we only get 70% of our full retirement benefit. So what we can do is we can come back to the software and say, okay, we're 67. It's 2,800. Let's take off 30% of this. So that's $840. So 2,800 minus 840 means that, oops, 2,800 minus 840, that's 1,960. So 1,960, right? 2,800 minus 840. Let's make it the math right. Yeah, 1,960 would be his Social Security at age 62. So we look at age 62, and now we're going to take Social Security in 1960. Remember, originally... He was running out of money at 88 years old. Okay, so let's go back to this. Everything's staying the same. Our cash flow, the $10,000 to visit the ballparks, million dollars in our 401k. We're going to earn 6%. We go to retirement. Now he actually is, he's out at 89. So we actually gained a year by taking Social Security early, which is why, again, Listen, I read Barron's, I get the Wall Street Journal, I get all the financial, Forbes, all those magazines. And I know they all tell you to take Social Security at your full retirement age or take it at 70. But sometimes that doesn't make sense. And so in this gentleman's case, it makes sense to get an extra year of income by taking Social Security early. And the reason for that is, is because we are turning the spigot off of his million dollars for retirement income, and we're turning on the social security spigot. And so we don't have to take out as much income. It started earlier so that that money within the 401k can last longer. Now I get it. It's only 12 more months, but 12 months. So now we're almost to 90. I feel a lot more better, a lot better as a financial advisor getting this person to 90. So we go back here. We say, okay, 62 social security. The other thing that we can adjust is I might have to say, Hey, Drew, this cash flow needs to come down a little bit and maybe you can adjust that anyway. So let's take that down. What if we took it to $8,000? You save and close it. You go back and now we've got them to 90. So there's things that need to be adjusted that you might have to look at. Rhonda Velasquez says she would rather go to Montana and the Grand Canyon. Those would be beautiful places. I've only seen the Grand Canyon from the sky uh, in an airplane flying over. Uh, and never been to Montana. Would love to go to Great Sky Country. It's a big sky. I think it's called Big Sky, right? Big Sky in Montana. Uh, would love to go there. Beautiful, uh, I hear. So, Rhonda, you put in your cash flows, Montana and the Grand Canyon. That's that's fine with me as well. Uh, great places to go visit. Great. I mean, uh, I'm a huge Teddy Roosevelt fan. Um, you know, the Grand Canyon, Montana, all that. We have a lot the national parks, him to thank for that. So, in this case, we lower that cash flow and we're able to make the money last longer. So the whole point of this is when you're doing retirement planning, when you're doing software planning, we're going to do one more thing here in just a second. Then I'm going to go eat lunch because I can, I'm getting hungry. Um, when you're doing planning, you want to make sure that you put up first everything that you want. When you want to retire, what you want to do in retirement when you think you want to take Social Security, what extra money you're going to need out of your portfolio. And let's just see how it works. So we do an EKG. If you want to do an EKG with me, obviously you can contact me in the description below and we can put together an EKG or we can talk about the process of how that works. But we want to see, okay, based on our current scenario, 
How long is our money going to last? If there's a red line, if we're running out too soon, if we have situations where um, we need to make adjustments, now we can go back. It doesn't have to be a, oh, crap, now I got to work for another five years, or I got to work another 10 years, or I got to save more. Maybe we just need to adjust some things. Maybe we need to adjust our budget. Maybe we need to adjust some of the things that we want to do in retirement. Maybe we can't do a $10,000 Major League Baseball ballpark travel every year. But if you're serious about retiring and you seriously want to get out of working, then maybe you don't do that. Maybe you do a $5,000 vacation every year or maybe every other year. So there's things that can be adjusted. Social security is something you've got to think about because a lot of times people say, I'm just trying to get to 67. Why? Let's Matt, I run a social security maximization schedule for everybody that becomes, you know, everybody who comes to me. So we want to look at when the best time is to take social security based on the calculator. But the calculator is not looking at your individual scenario. The calculator is just saying, Hey, if you take social security 67, these are going to be your maximum benefits. This is going to be your break even point. This is when you should take it. But that might not fit you. I've got a lot of clients who took Social Security early because it made more sense for them to take it early. And I've got clients that are taking it at 70 because it makes more sense for them to take it at 70. So you've got to really look at what is my individual situation telling me and what adjustments do I need to make based on my individual situation, not on whatever Barron's or Forbes, excuse me, or the Wall Street Journal or whoever's saying. So. Let's do the last thing here. Let's do a Monte. Let's do some Monte Carlos situations for you guys. A lot of people say, Drew, don't you like Monte Carlo scenarios? I do. I do like them. And let me show you what we do here. So pull up my screen, share my screen. All right. So this is a simple Monte Carlo scenario. You can get this on Portfolio Visualizer. Um, you can, if, if you sign up, you pay for it. I do pay for this. Um, but what I like about this software is it gives you kind of an idea of if I have a certain amount of money, so this is a million dollars, right? We're taking out $45,000 a year. That was our withdrawal. That's what Fast Eddie put on here. Um, 45,000, um, is our, with, it's a withdrawal fixed amount periodically. We're going to make an adjusted inflation to it. So we're going to have an adjust for inflation. We're going to do the withdrawal frequency on a monthly basis. So we're going to take out this 45,000. Oops. We're going to take it out monthly. So we need to break that down, that figure down. So that's going to be 3750. Simulation period is 30 years. So I'm going to adjust this up to 35 because we're 55, 65, 75, 85. Only gets to a 90 at least. Tax treatments pre-tax. So remember all that money was 401k. So this is pre-tax. Okay. And we're going to use historical returns and we're going to use the full history for that. Now, the nice thing is we can do sequence of return risk with Monte Carlo scenario. So the sequence of return risk is it allows you to put in bad years into your simulation. So sequence of return risk is simply that you go into retirement and the market stinks for the first few years of your retirement. Think about, let me go back to this real quick. Think about uh, 2000, let's go to the year 2000 here real quick. 2000 there it is so think about the year 2000 so if you retired in 99 the year 2000 the market was down 10 percent. then in 2001 it was down 13 percent, and then 2002 is down 23 percent. so that sequence of return risk that you retired with a million dollars in 1999 you thought man this is great and after three years your portfolio went from a million to 542,000 because of sequence of return risk now we don't want that to happen but we need to simulate what that's going to look like. Now, in this software, it, this simulates it for me. Now, what's nice in this case, if we have a really bad decade, like 2000, 2010, we're out at 71. So we go back to the Monte Carlos and we can say, OK, what kind of sequence of return risk? Let's just say two years. So the first two years, if historical inflation is what we want. We're going to rebalance our portfolio annually. We can actually put in our asset classes or we can put in our tickers. We can actually put in our the positions that you have in your current portfolio. Again, this is Portfolio Visualizer. It's a really good software for, for you guys to use. Um, I prefer, you know, doing this for clients who want to see it. So that's why I wanted to show it to you. So let's just do asset classes. So we'll say U.S. stock market. And then let's just go to... Da -da -da -da. Let's say total U.S. bond market. And we'll just do a 60-40 portfolio. 
Don't get technical with me. I'm just doing 60-40. We're going to run a simulation on this. So what this shows us using a 60-40 total bond market, we've got our percentiles. And so we can see, you know, based on, you know, the different scenarios in this scenario here, you know, the 20, we're out of money in year 23. That's the 10th percentile. Uh, in the 90th percentile, it's $4.75 million, which is probably not going to happen. So it's probably going to be somewhere between this green and orange line, preferably, um, or maybe even the green and purple line. So again, we go back to this and the Monte Carlo says, hey, there's a situation where this person's 55. They're out in 23 years. So what's that? 65, 75, 78. So that's telling us we're out at 78 with a with the simulated portfolio balances. This is telling us we're out at 71 if we look at it on a historical market narrative, right? Because the software is taking in like the actual returns of what the market's done. And so it just gives us a good idea. Hey, there are some things that need to be adjusted. Maybe you can't retire at 55 with a million dollars with the current the current situation this is in, or we just need to make adjustments so that we can. All right. So listen, any questions? Uh, let's see. John Gill said in 1999, we thought the market would go up forever. We sure got surprised. Yes. We did get surprised about that. Fast Eddie says, what do you think about personal capital software? Uh, I don't use it because I'm not a personal capital financial advisor. I watch Rob Bergman. Looks good to me, but I, again, I don't use it. So I can't give you a good answer on that. Um, any other questions about what we're looking at today? Can I retire? At, remember, can I retire at 55? Where will my retirement income come from? If you just joined later in the live stream, go back to the beginning. 401ks, we're going to use the rule of 55. IRAs, we're going to use 72 Ts if you're under the age of 59 and a half. Maybe some part-time work. The biggest thing that I want you to go away from today with is cash buckets. If you have the ability to invest more money outside of your 401k, outside of your IRA, and it makes sense tax-wise, use a cash bucket for that so that you can build up a freedom bucket of money. You can build up a bucket of money. Again, how I do it, I have a SEP account that I invest my retirement dollars in, and I have a, ta whoop, whoop, whoop. I have a taxable brokerage account. I'm putting money into both of these because if I want to retire at 55, I can pull money out of this taxable brokerage account and I don't have to pay a put. Now, I might have to pay taxes on capital gains and I pay taxes on interest and dividends as the years go on, but I'm not limited to the amount of money I can put in here. I'm not told when I have to take money out of here. And, and it can pass at this point in time, based on current tax code, it can pass to my kids more tax preferential than this will. Okay. So there's a benefit from an estate standpoint too, to invest in the taxable brokerage account. All right. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everyone who watches your financial EKG Hit the like button if you enjoyed this live stream. Make sure you subscribe. And if you do want to get in contact with me, all the information is in the description below. I hope you guys have a very blessed Thursday. We will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.